Welcome to these short videos on the Cisco Identity Services Engine YouTube channel. My name is Pavan Gupta. I'm a technical marketing engineer. Let's go over the platforms that the Cisco Identity Services Engine supports in this video, along with how to install ICE VM on one of the ESXi platforms. SNX 3.8xx uh, appliances are the latest platforms that are supported from 3.3p7 onwards. Always refer to end of life documentation for additional details on the end of sale and support dates. Any of these platforms can be used to deploy Cisco Identity Services Engine. And to choose the best ICE platform profile for your deployment needs, always refer to scale and performance guide for the most recent and performance scale metrics. These are the most recent ICE releases and patches that are currently available. For the most recent and best versions that would be available in the future, visit cs.co slash ice-software. ice2.7 and 3.0 have already reached the end of support. End of life calls were already done over the ice 3.1 and 3.2. Up until November 2026, um, end of maintenance for these two versions are supported. Although P7 is the latest uh, recent patch available on ICE 3.3, currently ICE 3.3 P6 is the recommended release and patch. The most uh, recent patch available for ICE 3.4 is 2 patch 2 and ICE 3.5 is anticipated to be published shortly. Now let's try to deploy an ICE VM on top of ESXi platform. I've already logged into my vCenter where my ESXi are being managed. And this is one of my ESXi machine. Right click and select to deploy a new virtual machine. Click next and provide a meaningful name. In my case, I'm trying to provide IceNote21-3.4. Select the same computation resources. Select the data store. Always refer to the latest compatibility metrics whenever you are trying to deploy a nice version and a guest operating system. The guest operating system for ICE 3.4 is supposed to be Red Hat Enterprise Linux 64-bit. And I'm trying to deploy a nice VM which, which is equivalent to SNS 3715. An SNS 3715 is supposed to have 24 CPU threads 32 GB RAM, 600 GB hard disk, which is supposed to be thick provision. That's what the recommended one is. And select the right interface, VM network, and associate an ISO, which I already uploaded into my data store. Select the ISO, connect it, power on, click next, review it, finish. Power on the ICE virtual machine and you're going to see these boot options. Select the first option to install Cisco ICE installation through keyboard and monitor. First, Red Hat Linux Enterprise version is going to get installed with all the required packages. And then it goes for a reboot. It's going to take a couple of minutes for it to install Red Hat Linux and goes for a reboot. And it's going to prompt you to uh, go through the setup wizard. During the setup wizard, you're supposed to provide the host name, IP address, net mask, default gateway. I'm not providing IPv6 address at it, as it is for demonstration purposes. Provide a domain name. Provide primary and secondary name servers. Provide primary, secondary, tertiary NTP servers for redundancy purposes, which is recommended. Go ahead and configure the time zone username and password. Remember, the same username and password is going to be used for you to log in to Cisco ICE CLI and as well as ICE UI. It's going to take a couple of minutes for it to get it installed and then initialize the services. Once after ICE services are initialized, log into the ICE UI using the configured username and password during the setup visit. Make sure the version right version is installed and go to the deployment page because it is a 
uh, default installation, fresh installation. ICE is going to get installed with a standalone rule with the default profiles. In order to ensure whether it, uh, it got detected with the right ICE profile or not, run the ICE counters by selecting the proper node and then ensure that it was showing up as ICE SNS3715 platform. That's the end of ICE platforms and installation of ICE VM on top of ESXi platform. Thanks for watching.